Hello, this is 101 on Plus TV Africa. My name is Elsie Godwin. According to data provided by cinemas and gathered by the Cinema Exhibitors Association of Nigeria, Nigerian cinemas made over 6 billion naira in 2019. Nollywood has been described as a growing industry. Let's find out what the Actors Guild of Nigeria plans to do in order to accelerate this growth and foster unity, transparency in the industry. To discuss this part of Nigeria's rich entertainment industry, I have with me the president of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, Emeka Rolas. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Okay, so how important would you say the Actors Guild is to Nollywood? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, the Actors Guild of Nigeria principally is a body that takes care of the welfare of actors uh, in Nigeria. We have over 2 million members spread over 32 states of Nigeria and uh, for us it's our duty to ensure that our members are treated well by producers, by people who are in the business of film. So far, so good. It's been very difficult because uh, the industry didn't start on that note. For instance, uh, in more well-developed countries where they mention royalty, residuals, and all of that, they understand this part. But here in Nigeria, once you, you appear in a film, it's a one-off thing and the producer or the owner of the content continues to make money from the same product, leaving the actor either uh, wallowing in poverty or doesn't even understand that there was a time he was an active uh, actor or something like that. So for us, it's basically about that. Okay, I like that you mentioned royalty and residuals, and we'll definitely get to that part because that's something I need to explain. But before that, tell us about your role as the president of the AGN. What does it entail? Uh, well, my role is uh, sitting at the helm of affairs for actors. It's a collective management. Every actor in Nigeria who is a member of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, we have a response unit where you're having issues either on set or out of set. The first thing, if, if you hear that any actor dies now, the president is the first person they will reach out to mm -hmm. to either break the news or be very sure of the information. We have a database a collective database for actors in Nigeria. And then we, 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 we have synergy with producers, directors. It's a more or less a collective responsibility. So as president, you oversee all of these things as you get reports from state chapters, as you get reports from members all over Nigeria and then outside Nigeria as well. Mm, okay. Having to manage two million people is, is not easy and men don't, um, act, they are not asked this question a lot, but I would like to know how you balance your life, your personal life, because you are everywhere. I could, I've been trying to get you, you're in South Africa today, Abuja tomorrow. How do you balance your life? Well, my wife understands this role and it's just, it's just happening now. Maybe mm -hmm. after now, things will fall back normal, but when duty calls, we just have to be on the road every time, just like... We just, I just got in from Abuja from our recent inauguration of uh, executives, which took place on the 11th of March mm -hmm. at Sheraton, in Abuja. And I'm here now for this, for this uh, show. Okay, so talking about um, going to Abuja and unveiling things, you recently unveiled the model for the headquarters of um, AGN. Yes. What is that building supposed to do for Nollywood? Well, for me, we are just doing our thing from the perspective of the Actors Guild. If you go to America or India, you see that the Actors Guild, they have their own. We have a whole lot that we're doing office-wise. For offices where we assemble uh, uh, administrative offices for Actors Guild, is, is supposed to be a replica of what we have in America, the Screen Actors Guild of America, SAG-AFTRA. We have rooms where we deal with checks, in case of residuals, all of these payments. We do letters to embassies for our members who are traveling. We have records. Sometimes embassies will call on you and ask you, is this person a member? We have uh, uh, somebody, uh, an applicant here, who says he's a member of your guild. It is records that will show you whether this person is a member. So we have a whole lot. And what we unveiled in Abuja is not just going to contain our office. We have the cinema section. We have the, the estate section. We have put up something that we also bring money into the purse of the association. So we don't only depend on dues that members pay or checkoffs. In, in, in big, uh, in developed enclaves, you find out that if an actor receives a million naira, he's supposed to pay 3% checkoff of that amount to the body. 
because the body is working for the member. But we are building that. If you go to London, the British equity, you have equity fees you have to pay in every fund that you receive. It's just like you pay VAT. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's where some of the tax deductions are made. You understand the point? Mm -hmm. While well, all this um, model to be able to deduct um, these payments is on the way, right? How do you get finances to make all this possible? We saw the model, it looked amazing. I mean, everyone is looking forward to see that stand. So, do you have any support from the government? Where, where do these finances come When we approach government for support, they will definitely do. But presently, you know there are a lot of uh, telecommunications uh, companies who are making use of our works without uh, uh, authorization. You see, a lot of them. And we have failed to pursue these funds either because people do not understand it. But we are pushing towards that. And when we come after them, they will pay all these monies. We are, we are working with audiovisual rights, uh, AVRS. And with this uh, AVRS, we can pursue some of these people who are using our works without authorization. And once this money comes, there are percentages for individual artists and percentages for the body. These are where we raise some of these funds. Our letters are Currently. before yes, our letters are before CBN, letters are before the National Assembly in working all of this. We're going all out to see that we make the guild better, you know. But we 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 assess people in Abuja we, we organize board of patrons and uh, in the process the patrons are also helping in their own way to see that they move in Hollywood. By the way, the Edifice, what you saw us unveil, we are planning to host the International Federation of Actors uh, Conference in 2023, and we are going to bid for that. And we are believing that if, we're, if we get this fixed up, we're going to do that right where we have unveiled now. And we, we call on corporate bodies and companies to also help us make this dream a reality, because Nollywood is big but we have to work from different departments of Nollywood where we belong. Mm. Talking about this unveiling and your members, I mean, it's highly important for your members to be happy with whatever processes um, you're putting in place. So yesterday we saw Hilda Dokubo come out to speak on the faces she saw at the unveiling of um, this beautiful project, and she was very offended. I mean, having someone like Senator Elisha Abu on that um, place was quite uncomfortable and she is demanding that this person stops being a grand patron of um, the AGN. How do you react to that? Thank God you used the word, she's demanding. Everybody is entitled to her opinion. In the first place, if she was not at the event, number one, and then having, uh, having seen that and she felt offended, she would have written a letter to the Guild, maybe in form of a petition. We have mechanisms to deal with these issues. If there's something that the Guild has done that you're not very happy with, you put up a letter to the Guild. Mm -hmm. Or even call me on phone and say, this is what and what. And then you understand the processes. You understand the point. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm president of a two million people, I don't take decisions alone as president. Senator Abbo, whatever he is, I do not know him from Adam, but I'm sure the committee that uh, presented his name you know, screened and eventually approved that he be made a national patron to represent the Northeast zone where he is from. You understand the point? They know all of this. So when you come up to sentimentalize it, you know that the guild is not uh, swayed by such sentiments. What is the process of appointing a patron for the Altos Guild of Nigeria? For, for patronship, you tell the, we have vice presidents of East zone and then the chairman of state chapters. So you now tell them to make a point to nominate from their zones who have been useful to them, who have helped the guild maybe on, on maybe uh, social impact things around the guild. And then when they make such submissions, then the committee will look at the names. Do you understand the point? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, they pass it on to me for my signing of signatures on the certificates to be so presented. Then for, for me to wake up one morning and see on social media a purported member of the guild shouting the guild down and all of that. You know, it's not something that is acceptable. But this is not just about Hilda Dukubo as well. Kate Henshaw has responded and um, they feel that they are not supposed to be represented by someone who does not value the rights of women. So this is going to lead me to my next question. What is the value of AGN when it comes to women's rights and gender equality? The, the issue, it doesn't matter how many people react to this. What matters is, what is the difference between morality and legality before prima facie? You understand the point? The man in question, 
he has not been proven to be a serial woman beater. Mm. If he had a case which no competent court of jurisdiction had convicted him on that matter, why should AGM be robbed into it? This same person has nine, nine membership of nine committees in the Senate. This person is still representing his people in the Senate. Nobody has removed him from that point. Nobody has removed him as a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And AGN did not appoint him patron as a measure to celebrate him having beaten a woman. Do you understand the point? The, the patronship came on the heels of his people appointing him, nominating him for this position. You understand the point? So people can turn these things around. All the names you have mentioned have been in this industry for the past 20 years. And I do not think that they have done anything particularly for the Actors Guild of Nigeria, not as individual celebrities who are doing their businesses. When we come to a collective responsibility, it's not when you see these things, you jump on the social media. Social media is not a medium for the governance of our guild, and it cannot be. So you can gather up people, it becomes a conspiracy theory. It's simple that maybe there's something you are pursuing or something you are targeting. But I have said, as an organization, if you see something that is not right, there are mediums. Do up a letter, write or call or send a message and we'll feed you back. Okay, let's go on a quick break. But well, when we come back, we'll definitely carry on this conversation. Welcome back. This is still 101 on Plus TV Africa. Before we went on that very quick break, we were discussing the ongoing call by some of the members of the association to remove Senator Elisha Abu from the grand uh, position of the grand patron of the association. However, you're explaining now that this is not a decision that was made solely by you, but by committees from the Northeast to say, this is the person who we want to be represented by. Now, what is the role of a grand patron to the association? No, is it just a patron, not grand, just a patron? Okay, what's the role of a patron? A patron, role of a patron, we, this is how we select our patrons. One, when you call the vice presidents or the chairman to select a patron, you must tell them, please select people who have been useful to your guild. For instance, if you go to the Northeast, where we have members, we have five states of Actors Guild of Nigeria in the Northeast. We have Bauchi, we have Gombe, we have Adamawa, we have Yobe, we have Taraba, and we have Boruno State. Now, this area, you must know that has been this Boko Haram area. In the last how many years, they've not been working. But there are people who attend to their needs. Sick people, there are people who assist them because of the guild level. The recent army film that we shot, I had to move the film to Boruno State to ensure that people from that area get jobs. Do you understand? How many of our actors have considered the plight of these people? And then when you told them, select patron, you leave it to them. And when they brought these names, there are about six names that were pruned down to get to the two, the two senators, the woman and the man for the Northeast. And then when you come up with this kind of issue, you find out that it's not just, we don't make patronship for, for money. It's not about money. It's about what are the things that you have done for our association in the years past. For the association or for the society? Society is one, mm -hmm. association is two. If you are doing much for the society and you're not doing for the association, of course. So Elisha Abu has done much for, for the society? For the Northeast. Uh, okay. For the Northeast, which necessitated their nominating him for that position for Actors Guild of Nigeria from the Northeast. We okay. have other people that yeah. we have picked different places in different zones. I needed to talk on royalties and residual, but before that, the first time you saw his name on that list, because you had to go through them for confirmation, yes. did you feel any type of way? I feel like. It depends on the feeling you're talking about. I know the story they are raising, mm -hmm. but you see... And I, we, we saw the slap, even see, if we know that, yes, we were supposed to wait okay. for a competent court okay, law, right? You to saw say, the slap. Yeah, we did saw you also happened. see the apology? Yeah, we saw the apology, Fine. which a lot of the, people are saying that apology that, is that not... It, see, it doesn't, it doesn't count. What you should be asking here is, whether did he come out to apologize? Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. Will you now be... Is the woman involved? Did the woman say she didn't accept the apology in all of this that we are saying? Mm. For crying out loud, when I mention morality and legality, you ask us who is holier than Senator Abu. There was a committee set up in the Senate on this same matter, and the committee did not convict him. 
Is Actors Guild a body to be used to do all of this? People should just go and see that. There's no point sentimentalizing issues just maybe to drive a point. We know, where, we know the stage where people who are fighting for women's rights operate, mm -hmm. but not within the confines where Actors Guild is involved. I don't want to begin to mention names, but if we begin to dig into people's personal lives, honestly, people who have mentioned these names, they may not even stand in the morality test. But I don't want to go that way. What I'm trying to say is that it's not enough for anybody who feels a member of the Actors Guild of Nigeria. That is, if they are, the difference between a star and a member, they are two different things. You can be a star, you can be a celebrity, but you're not a member of our guild. Is Hilda Dokubo and Kate Hensha a member of your guild? We have to check the membership list. I do not know all the members. Like I told you, we have two million people. Mm -hmm. Do you understand the point? What makes you a member is how much have you paid the guild in the last two years? Do you have the guild's identity card as I'm hanging? If you're working and you have issues, how can the guild fight for you? We must check your membership status and all of that. So when you go on social media, something that you ought to settle in in-house and go on social media, I do not know whom you are trying to impress. Unfortunately for whoever that is shouting is that decisions of an association, an organization is not what you, you get from social media. Do you understand the point? So these are issues that I do not want to join issues with anybody because the guild has had different crises, leadership and otherwise, for over the years, and nobody came out to say, we need to stop this. And now in the last three years, we're about getting there. The event we had in Abuja became the very first event we had in AGN, in the first time of the Guild. You can imagine an event that, of course, swallowed even the stars that, visit, that came for the event. An event that we had federal government well represented, the police, the army, the Senate, different people you know, represented in that event. And it's an event that you should, first of all, say, ah, for my guild to have achieved this, but there's a mistake here, can we talk about it? And then you jump on the social media and begin to do video and draw attention to yourself. And you want me to come and react and begin to talk with you? No, 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 I don't do such things. So we have a focus where we're going and nobody the, what can distract us. What is the feedback us. and complaint mechanism for members of your association? That's assuming some do not know about I it. I said it. If you're in a state chapter, for instance, you're in Lagos, and you have this kind of issue, you call whoever is the chairman of your Lagos State chapter. If you have opportunity to be talking with the president directly, you can call. I could tell you, okay, please write, write it, let me look at it. Let me tell somebody to look at it. And some of these things are things we can do in-house. But I understand that social media has become a place where people jump on maybe to draw attention to themselves. But at the end of the day now, every week, in this country, a, an emir was dethroned. Within one week, it's no longer news. You know, that's the way social media happens in Nigeria. But I want to be very straight about it. We cannot take decisions with social media noise. Okay, good. So basically, Hilda and Kate Henshaw needs to write a letter if they very, are very, a very. member of the association, of course, like of you course. said. All right, moving on to important The best issues. they can do is to say, we don't want to remember us again. Mm -hmm. Membership in Nigeria is not by force. You understand the point? Yeah. But for you to gather and conspire and begin to draw more people who are not even our members in the line of what they are saying, I think it's not, uh, it's not something to even give an ear to. I keep mentioning it. If this man has been proven to... This same man has a wife that he's living with. Is the wife not a woman? The, the woman that they said he slapped with some social media is a family, is a village, is a town. Has anybody spoken from that area? But the fact that nobody is speaking from that area does not make the actions right. What actions? We have not, we didn't make him patron saying that because he slapped a woman. People must look at the sensibilities of what they are raising. I'm telling you here that Senator Abu, I'm not standing for him. But from the eyes of the law, there is no conviction on that case. Mm -hmm. So nobody will tell me to now disgrace somebody because they said. No, 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 no. It's not, look at it from the viewpoint I'm coming from. I'm not interested whether what he did. You're just interested in the fact that he is good for the association. As the, the people he's representing, the Northeast. Any moment you hear any court pass a judgment on this and he is convicted, the guild will immediately delist his name from patronship. That's to tell you how, how fair we can be. Okay, talking about support from government, how transparent, I mean, we hear about um, Central Bank of Nigeria grants for creative industry. We also hear about the uh, Bank of Industry grants for some parts of the creative industry. Is the AGN involved in this process? 
when some of the grants where the AGN as a body has not been involved in this process, but we are pushing to see that the guilds are also involved because sometimes people who make presentation to government do not pass this strong information to government. Mm -hmm. But you see that whenever things happen, they begin to look for the guilds. If you, our house is not in order, I must tell you, people are still running the show like this is business, businessmen, businessmen, building cinemas here and there, non organization. The strength with which people are, the, the, the energy that these people are shouting on Senator Abu, if they can come together and use the same energy and battle TV stations, terrestrial stations to pay actors well, producers to pay well, we would have gotten better. Some of these funds you're talking about, individuals assess the funds. Sometimes they don't do what, what they need to do with the money. So we need a situation, uh, 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 an environment where government will understand how the industry works. They are just looking at the industry from the angle of, let's just give them money and it will boost this and we boost that. But the industry is still controlled by certain individuals who do not see it from the eyes of government. So when you release three billion, you end up seeing the three billion finished like that without any impact. For 25 years of Nollywood, we are not supposed to by now continue going to people's houses to disturb them to make film. And we have millionaires who can invest. Each time you meet any state government, they'll tell you about film village. Who has built one? Even if they do, they will do it without the practitioners who are going to make use of the film village. So we're just running round and round. So we need to come together to let government understand what we really need. So they cannot as an be industry. isolated decisions. Yes, you can't isolate the practitioners. How can you be having over, over okay, now AGM members are about two million. You have not talked about producers, creative designers guild, directors guild, and you just wake up one morning over the news, you keep announcing billions of grants. What happens is that people who are not practitioners will go and meet the, 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 the criteria to collect this money, and they will take the money to go and do something else. Then every day you keep seeing practitioners suffering on the normal street. Okay, let's go on another break, but when we return, we we'll definitely have more to speak or ask uh, Mr. Remy Carolas. This is One on One on Plus TV Africa, and I'm here with the president of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, Emi Carolas. Thank you for your time once again. Thank you. Okay, so before we went on that break, you were talking about the isolated decisions, um, especially from the government part. How do we now begin to ensure that there is an inclusive, uh, there is inclusiveness when these decisions are being taken? Yes, you see, sometimes what happened in the industry today, you hear about that the government has released two billion. Naira, for instance, pocket persons, individuals, rush to government, either because of one long leg that they feel they have, mm -hmm. and begin to feed the government with the wrong information about the industry. And then at the end of the day, they will set up a setting pseudo committee. Do you know that there are a lot of people who are in the industry that have defiled membership to any guild? They are non-conformists, but they are the first people to set up WhatsApp group and name it one thing under the industry and begin to use it to go and look for government money. And at the end of the day, government would have spent the two billion, giving it to nobody. You will see somebody who has been in this industry for 20 years, has never shot a film, has ever acted in any film, has ever produced one, but is busy claiming I'm a Nollywood stakeholder. He is probably doing some other business. I have people who in the last 12 years have insulted Nollywood, but today they are the ones benefiting from Nollywood. They are the ones that have built studios. They have built different things. They have done very big movies. What are you doing to sanitize that space? That's the issue. The guild heads are coming together in one block to deal with these issues. But we don't want to be seen early. We want to take people on our words. Okay. Very soon, people who have gone to collect billions of naira from government in the name of Nollywood will bring them to book. We we'll ask them to come and account. If you have been collecting money from a state government claiming to be doing one event or the other, come and account who in Nollywood has your money directly affected. Do you understand the point? So these are the people who want to shy away from when you want to do big things. Mm. But we are gradually getting closer to them because you cannot use Nollywood name to go and do projects somewhere and then the members of Nollywood are not benefiting directly. So we don't also, want indirect benefit. A direct benefit. If I go and get money on behalf of Else uh, plus, uh, plus, plus TV, TV Africa. 
Plus TV Africa should be able to get direct benefit, not indirect. Mm. I will not come here and tell you, you know, I, I got about 200 million for you people and uh, the gutters on your street now are swept. Is that what you want? I want to get 200 million on behalf of Plus TV and come here and check infrastructures that you need funding for. And I put them down. But what we keep running about is we're organizing film festivals here and there. We're not ready to improve on our craft. We're, we're making big films. We're allowing people to do X, Y, Z. These are issues we're bringing to the table because heads of guilds will eventually come together and we run these people out. So it's also safe to say you are fighting corruption from your own end. Of course, yes. We have to. We have to. Okay, have let's to. talk residuals and reality. The last time we had you here, the time was not uh, enough. Um, even after then, we've seen someone like Gideon Okeke come out to speak on this issue. What is the situation right now? The situation right now is that there's nothing because the industry didn't start on that note. You saw an industry that people who felt they, they needed to do something started. It was quite private, but they didn't, have the idea, they didn't have the idea of what the industry entails. But now our synergy with Audiovisual Rights Society of Nigeria is helping us begin to go to companies, organizations. Some people play our, our, our uh, videos in their buses, in airplanes, in hotels, and all of that. We've written them letters. The practice of uh, pay TV stations airing our film. You cannot buy my material here in Nigeria and then air in Somalia. <laughs> Do you understand the point? And you claim you have bought all the right from the producer. If we are backed by the World International Property Organization, WIPO, they say that the producer's right is different from the performer's right. If I am in a film and the producer sells the film to you for 200,000 naira, it's not enough to cover my own right. You have just covered the producer's right. In film, there are theatrical releases, there are DVD releases, there are cinema releases. All these releases are grouped in different forms. So when you are signing a contract with any producer, you should ask the producer, this film you're making, what release is it? If he says he covers all the release, you'll be signing your contract based on all the release. But not a situation where you sign your contract on a short film. Somebody tells you, look, this is a short film, it's an advocacy film, we're not selling this film. You sign a contract. Two years later, the same producer sells the film to BBC and makes dollars. You have the right to call him to order or sue, and he will have to give you your funding. And the WIPO law also states that in a film, there are major characters who are entitled to residual or entitled to royalty. All these things come into play. So all over time, people have been ignorant of all of this. They don't even know how to apply them. In December, I had a meeting with the British Equity in UK. These are what we're discussing. For instance, now, uh, Netflix is coming here. Every discussion about that, the, the, the performers are not carried along. Only the filmmakers are the ones carried along. How can Netflix leave a country or an environment where residual and royalty are in practice, and then they come here to take advantage of the ignorance of performers? We will not allow that. So what are you doing to create awareness amongst your members, at least? Because if two million people who are involved in Nollywood are aware and are enlightened, then maybe it will be a, a, a good place to yes, start. We're, we're, so we're, what are you we're, doing? We're trying to get the, thing, uh, the right things right. Okay. As affiliates of International Federation of Actors, we have done letters to our global body in Brussels, and they are working on all of that. I wish we had more time, but we have to go. Thank you so much. And we Thank hope you. to have you here again soon as um, all the work you're doing at the AGN progresses. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Now we'll be chatting with Emeka Rulas, who is the Actors Guild of Nigeria president. And um, thank you for watching. You can always catch all this conversation and all exclusive content by visiting and subscribing to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. My name is Elsie Godwin. Just stay with us. Mm -hmm.